Hello and welcome, I'm Aruba. Thank you for joining me this is episode 2 of Let's Play Endless Space, Disharmony. We are playing as the Disharmony race. If we look at our Empire Factors, we can see... Well, I would have assumed somewhere, probably on the Dipl Diplomacy screen. Yes, we can see here. We are the Harmony race. A faction of sentient minerals trapped by dust in this galaxy. Very strange, so... Right, well let's continue to explore. This planet here has no current production because I disabled it momentarily. Let's go back to food. That really boosts... You know, it's actually almost capped out, so let's have them instead do science for a moment. 14 per turn will help us to get xenobiology in just two turns. And we need something else. That science, that uh, industry into science or food production is a bad trade-off because you're you're giving up 66 percent of the production in favor of just a small amount of whatever else so you, I'd rather have it using the industry for actual production hmm two more turns for all that if we got rid of that change it to this. It's going to take far too long. Seven turns. No. Yeah, we'll just do one more turn of this. Go ahead and continue to explore. Show me what you see. We already know that's not po colonizable. You can tell by the little red dot. That tells you how many planets are in the system. If they're white, they are populatable or colonizable. So we just finished our soil xenobiology study, which allows us to make a planetary exploitation. We already had the ability to make that planetary exploitation, right? See how it's alien grafting. Alien grafting is the level 2 version of the food exploitation available on planets. So instead of having what it was before, which was just plus 1 on ocean and plus 1 on planet, now we have plus two on planet and plus two on ocean, so it's a huge boost to the food generation on a planet like this, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to get it early on. It also helps us out with um, jungles, uh, Terran planets as well. I believe our first planet was, oh, it was Tundra. It also allows us to make a system improvement called Silic Soils. One more food per person on planet, and it only costs two dust per turn. Which is really curious because we don't actually have dust. How does that work? Huh. It says the Harmony are unlike other peoples, including in their dietary needs. While they need to turn living matter into energy forms that provide sustenance, that process is accelerated when there are higher proportions of silicates in the soil. In guiding agricultural exploitation in this direction, they can efficiently improve food production. Okay, but where is my actual s dust? I don't, I don't have any numbers of dust anywhere. Does that mean there's an actual cost or not? Well, let's make the, uh, let's make that thing and see what happens once it's done. I mean, I don't really know how else to look at it. All right, so that one's doing that. That one can make silic soils as well. Soon, I would like to build a colony ship. As soon as this one gets capped out on population. Either one, really. It's going to grow in one more turn. We've got our science. Now we're working on the Enway fusion plants, which is just an improvement that we can make that will drastically improve the amount of production we get on each system. It'll also reveal, and again, as a as the Harmony race, we actually already know where this re this resource is, but it will allow us to use this resource, Titanium 70, which is a very good military resource can be used for things somewhere up in here. Right there, see where it says requires titanium 70. So in order to make ion torpedoes, you need that strategic resource. Very similar to Civilization V. So, yeah, I'm fine with that technology being next. I'd like to populate this planet right here, this tiny ocean. To do that, we need to build another... Are both of my planets at four? Huh. Okay.
That's fine. Okay, so Rassam has finished its planetary exploitation, which means that this planet's gonna have tremendous food production. Just crazy food production. Um, I mean, just look at that, it's crazy. Where is it all coming from anyway? I don't even really know how to add that all up. Four from infrastructure, four from type, three from anomaly. It's a lot. So this planet's gonna grow very quickly, which means that we can crank up the Oh, that's probably why. It's because I've got this skewed that far. Yeah, it's really boosting food production. Well, let's go down to, like, say, here. And as soon as this is done, which is going to take five turns, that's a long time. I, I think that... Uh, I have no way of boosting industry here. I think we'll go with right around there. And actually, if I can pump out that extra bit of technology quicker, that would really help out if I could get that going. How much do we have so far? Six. So I'd need either 20, 34 in one turn or 17 per turn for the next two turns. Boop. So about there. That'd be fine with that. Let's do that. Next turn. I do like to uh, to just let it auto explore because um, it's kind of a pain trying to remember where everything is. Luxury resource, concrete artifacts, cool. It's a pretty big galaxy, and there's a lot of enemies. Exploration event happened. We get extra experience on our heroes. Yay! <laughs> Doesn't matter. Alright, now we're generating 19 per turn, and we're already at uh, that, so we only need 17. I could probably dial that back one step. Yep. We have no strategic or luxury resources yet. One more turn, and we will have... Uh, this population is actually getting close to capped out. So I'm going to need to definitely finish that technology so I can get started on that production thing. I'm expecting probably in this video we'll uncover at least one of the other factions. And so we've just finished that uh, N-Way fusion plant, allowing us to use Titanium-70 and build the star system improvement. We've discovered Titanium across the galaxy. A rich deposit was found on Rassam-5. So that's the fifth planet in the Rassam system. We're already colonized there, so we actually already have three units of Titanium-70. And if we go all the way back to our Empire Factors, remember how it only took... Um, I think it was listed on here, didn't it? This is from Finding Stuff. Maybe it's not listed in here. But we're getting 3% extra food and production and science from having those three units of uh, Titanium-70 or whatever it was. And remember how it said that we only need three units, three of a strategic resource, to have an abundancy effect. So, what this is sell what this is saying is that we get minus 10% industry cost per tritanium that we own in our system for the modules that require tritanium. Sorry, not tritanium, titanium, up to a maximum of minus 30%. It also provides with extra production on per person on each planet. If you actually meet the abundancy requirement, right? there it says if you have at least for most races if you have four or more you get an extra 30 percent off so we get that already with just one single thing that we found so we get minus 60 percent now on our anything that requires titanium 70. so we're going to want to build lots of weapons and things that require titanium 70 since we already have that huge advantage and we also just finished our technology so i definitely want to make this right away and i want to get that queued up on this one as well I want to really try to crank out resource, although this one's about to get population capped. Hmm. Which means that 
I'm going to need to start building a colony ship. Let's take a look at it first. So this one is, yeah, it's kind of, kind of off to the corner. I could, instead of worrying about building a colony ship, I could try to pick up the next technology that will let me colonize. It would allow us to colonize Arid. Why does it say minus 100% population growth? That seems kind of weird. Well, we do have an arid system in there, don't we? Yeah, small arid with rich soil. Let's do that. We'll go for arid epi epigenetics. It's going to take three turns. I'm okay with it taking three turns. Although, if I go boop, I think we can get it in two turns. Yeah, let's do that. We'll slow down population growth just slightly so that we can focus on trying to get that next technology. And then we don't have to worry about expanding. I'm not really sure how this this uh, race deals with expansion. Because um, with with other races, they get really upset if you have over-expansion. But it seems like our... If I'm, if I'm understanding this correctly, like our goal is to just expand as much as possible and get as many of these nat natural resources as we can. So we can try that. Um, we possess at least three units of titanium. Yep. Go ahead and continue exploring with that ship. And let's see if we actually have any special ships we can work on. I'm going to spend a little tiny bit of time on this. So this is the, the available ship designs we've got. We currently have two ships, ship classes that we can build with. We have the ship class Volcanic, which has minus 50% industry for support modules, civilians, and uh, minus 50% support module civilian tonnage. Construction effects, minus 100%. Wow, they look kind of cool. They're like crystals. That's sweet. Uh, we also have the ship class Cutter, which is, uh, I'm guessing, the exploration ship. This is the colony ship. Over here we can see, this is where you'd name it, the actual cost to produce it, its military power, how much life it has, how far it can, how many command points it takes if you're going to put it into a fleet. This is the invasion military power for ground assault. This is the accuracy score. I'm not really sure what that is, that's new. Probably something to do with how likely it is to actually hit its target. Evasion score, how likely it is to dodge. Apparently this ship doesn't have any specialization slots. Oh, it does have one. Interesting. And then the tonnage. This is how much it can weigh. This one can only weigh 80 tons. This can weigh 100. So right now... Oh, cool. You can change the range of the ship. Apparently melee, they weigh less. So we can build different types. Strategic resources needed for this module. Mouse over the module icon for more details. We need antimatter to make high energy couplings. This here lets us know that armor, this special kind of armor here, predictive plating, requires titanium. We have titanium, so it's very inexpensive. It says it would cost 11.2 to, uh, to, to build. And I'm not sure if that's actually before or after our reduction in cost. I really don't remember. But we don't really have any good technologies yet to start kind of taking advantage of that titanium. I just wanted to take a look at it. Alright, let's let some more turns go. About to explore another planet. Varan. Now, there's one unit of Titanium-70 here. If I were to go colonize this, I could then trade one of my units and still um, have a luxury, you know, the, the luxury bonus. Trading can be pretty useful to acquire other other luxury resources or, or strategic resources. I also have a bunch of more hero-related stuff. Kind of strange. One more turn, we'll have the... Uh, 
the ability to expand to another planet on Rassam, which is good because it's population capped. Since it is population capped, I would like to shift more towards science for a turn. Although this one won't be able to grow quite as much. What ends up happening to all this excess food, I wonder? Probably nothing. But we can go about that high, and there's no real cost to this planet, so let's do that. Get a little bit, like an extra little bit of science. That will carry over the next turn. I think, unless I did it wrong, we only needed about 20 technology, 20 science, uh, and we got it already. Temporary effects, depending on the game speed. Core charts. Tuned to the rhythms of the galaxy, the Harmony are far more efficient at finding and exploiting loads of strategic resources. By linking this, the living crystal of their ships to the Harmony's own mines, Harmony vessels can also sense the shapes of the galaxy and feel the locations of planets and systems that contain useful resources. So we'd get plus 100% um, speed, like uh, how, how far they can travel. Or we could get this science improvement, which I think would be pretty cool. Unlocking all of this other stuff could be good too. This is too cheap to pass up though. See how it automatically added 12? The excess was carried over into that. So we'll actually get that in just one turn. And then I'll probably queue that one up because I think I'm going to want it. So we just got Arid epigen Epigenetics. So let's go ahead now that we can have that. We can colonize this planet. You don't need to build anything. You can just go over here and click Colonize. That's going to... Let's move that up there. It's going to take three turns, unfortunately. But that's just the price we have to pay. That'll give us more population cap. And then we can turn down the science focus and try to get more population growth to happen. Meanwhile, this planet here just wrapped up its thing. Let's get them building a... What? Are we going to be able to colonize anything else here? Nah, I don't want to do a desert. Let's have them just start building a colony ship. And we'll use that to probably move over here. Let them keep exploring. Now that yellow thing... To unlock the full potential of this endless wonder, a restoration is needed. What appeared to be a planet in very tight orbit around a sun turns out to be the remains of an endless power generation plant. Full of advanced particle engineering and protected by an or orichalcix? Orichal chalices? Chalix? I'm not sure. This installation once produced vast quantities of microwave energy that ha was beamed to a grid of now destroyed transmission satellites. So it's more happiness, but we don't actually have happiness, so I guess it wouldn't matter to us. Oh, uh, yep, I just read that. Okay. So they finished that star system improvement. And now they're getting to work on the colonization. And I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.